19-year-old Martre Coles, was born on October 22, 1997, from Highland Springs, Virginia. He was the youngest of eight children and was described as funny, creative, outgoing, happy, and considerate with a big heart. However, Martre and his family would face tragedy in 2014 when his mother passed away. Her death hit hard for everybody in the family, but especially for Martre. Despite the grief, he successfully graduated from Highland Springs High School and focused his attention on his passion for art and drawing. Soon enough, things started to look up for him when his father Maurice found love again with 49-year-old Denise Gay. Maurice and Denise worked together for some time, and after the passing of his wife, their relationship grew. Denise would stop by the house to clean and make some meals after learning of his wife's passing in efforts to fill the void in the household that now consisted of him and Martre. Eventually, Maurice moved Denise in with her 10-year-old daughter on his own. Upon moving them in, Martre got along with Denise and saw her as a mother figure. However, he did not get along with her youngest daughter. It is said that she had some sort of behavioral issues and was not really happy with the living situation. Martre was often annoyed that he had to look after her because she was a child. She was most annoyed that he was always on the phone with his girlfriend Ashlyn whenever she wanted to use it. They would always bicker with each other, but one day it escalated. Her daughter stabbed Martre on his shoulder blade with scissors and immediately after, he left for his sister Marquisha's house. Upon telling her, she offered to have him stay with her, but he said he didn't want to because he liked Denise, because she cooked, cleaned, and helped him. Denise forced her daughter to apologize to him and ultimately never told Maurice about the incident. While in the new blended family, Martre began having a difficult time getting along with his father. Martre suffered from depression while still dealing with his mother's death and felt his father ignored his mental health. To better the living situation, Denise brought in her eldest daughter, 22-year-old Latoya, into the house to monitor Martre and her youngest daughter. One day, Denise and Latoya allegedly enter Martre's room to find a pentagram drawn on the floor and hidden underneath the rug. They notified his father about it, and he was livid, but Martre denied drawing it. Shortly after, there was another incident where their late mother's car was set on fire, and Martre was blamed for it. However, he denied it, and his sisters did not believe he did it, because he would have never burned his mother's car. One day, Martre spoke with his father about applying for art school, but Maurice told him he didn't know enough about higher education to really assist him, and that's when Denise offered to help. Denise encouraged him to follow his dreams of attending art school, specifically Full Sail University in Florida. Denise offered to pay for him to go to the school, helped him apply, and helped him to get a date to visit the college. Soon after, he's contacted by a woman from the university named Shelia Crenshaw via email, who asked him if he wanted to come visit. His response to the email was hopeful and excited to go, and the visit date was set for March 20th, 2017. Prior to the visit, he was asked to complete an essay in art portfolio. Denise was supportive and they spent time making a paper mache mask that had to be of his face. On this day, Martre was getting ready for his trip and had plans to take a bus from Virginia to Florida. As he was packing and getting ready, he forgot that he left his wallet at his sister's house, so he texted her that he was coming to grab it and left for the door. However, he never showed up. He also was not answering his phone calls from his family or his girlfriend, Ashlyn. Ashlyn called Denise and with concern, she said she had no idea 
He just left and she hasn't seen him since. It seemed that he just disappeared hours before he was supposed to leave. The next day, his two sisters drove to their father's house. They talked to their father and he did not sound concerned. Oddly enough, nobody in the house was making eye contact with them and everything seemed off. They went to the police to file a missing persons report and then the police talked to Denise who stated the same story and appeared calm and collected. On this afternoon, a man is casually walking on his lunch break through a wooded area in an industrial part of the county. As he's walking, he spots a blue container randomly sitting there in the woods behind a factory. Curious, he comes closer to see what's inside, and to his horror, he sees a young man's body. Horrified, he called the police immediately and told them what he found. In due time, the body is confirmed to be Martre Coles. His hands were tied behind his back, but there were no clear signs of injury. However, according to his autopsy, it revealed that he was drugged with ethanol, trazodone, and GHB, which slowed his breathing, and he was suffocated before being placed in the bin. Before leaving the crime scene, investigators hid a surveillance camera since they had a feeling the killer might return to move his remains. Upon hearing the news of his death, his girlfriend Ashlyn was mortified. She remembered she had access to his email account and came across the one from the college counselor in Florida. Eerily enough, she noted Celia's email ended with at gmail and not at edu. Upon hearing this lead, police thought this Celia person might know about his murder, so they contacted the university. However, the university explained that they don't have an employee with that name, nor do they ever use Gmail accounts for employees. They then tracked the email's IP address and found that it was created in Martre's home. All eyes went back on his household. But before police even get a chance to question the family, the hidden surveillance camera triggered an alarm. There were images found of the back of a vehicle that belonged to Maurice and a blurry figure with something in their hand. Upon investigating the photo, the stature matched closely to Denise. They interrogated Denise again and she had the same calm demeanor, but she denied having anything to do with his death. They then bring in his father, Maurice. He didn't show much emotion either and when asked if he had anything to do with Martre's death, he said no way. Denise's youngest daughter is questioned, and she admits she and Martre had their issues, but she had no involvement. She said she might have witnessed his murder. She said on the day he was reported missing, she heard noises coming from his room, specifically Martre throwing up and screaming, get off me. She then went to his room to see what was happening and saw him on the floor kicking his feet with something white on his face and Denise and Latoya on top of him. Denise told her go back to her room and she did, but then she heard the sound of someone going into the attic and pulling something. She then went back out to see what was happening and saw Latoya moving a bin across the floor. The police show her a picture of the bin to see if she recognized it, and she did. She also said Maurice had nothing to do with it, and instantly police believed her version of events. Police believed Denise's plan was to kill him, dispose of his body, and then tell everyone he must be at college. But the plan spoiled when he wanted to return to his sister's house, which forced a sudden change of plans. And then the story became that he went to get his wallet and he went missing. They also suspect she was behind the pentagram drawing and the car fire, both being attempts to get him out of the house. A week later, 
police brought LaToya in for questioning. In LaToya's interview, she denied having anything to do with Martre's death at first, but then admitted to having a hand in it later. Police believed she was being used by Denise and only helped her in her devious plan. Denise still insisted she was innocent and did nothing to hurt Martre, but nobody bought it. She and her daughter LaToya were both charged with one count of conspiracy to commit murder and one count of first-degree murder. During the trials, more pieces of information regarding Martre's death was brought to light. Two weeks after he disappeared, Denise's youngest daughter actually called the police to the house. When the police arrived, Denise's daughter told them it was a false alarm and she was in trouble for calling them. But when she was taken aside by police, body camera footage showed her telling police about Martre's murder. It is unknown why police did not do anything about the information promptly. Her therapist also confirmed she never backtracked about the story. At trial, when she was asked if she was sad that Martre was dead, she replied, no. When Maurice testified, he said on the day Martre went missing, he was at work until 2 p.m. By the time he arrived back home, he fell asleep and woke up to his two daughters at the house. He said Denise was jolly and displayed physical affection towards the girls, which struck him as odd knowing that they never got along. When the sisters said they wanted to file a missing persons report, he remembered telling them it was too soon and didn't believe Marche was really missing because he didn't have anywhere else to go. He remembered cleaning Marche's room with Denise that night and coming across a white paper mache mask and discarding it. He didn't worry about Marche until March 21st, which was his late wife's birthday as he and his children traditionally gathered each year on the date to remember their mother. He said if he would have run off with a cult, he wouldn't miss his mother's birthday. When Denise and Latoya were charged with Martre's murder, he said he was shocked. There was an abundance of evidence against Denise, including that months prior to his death, she searched online for the terms, find something that works like chloroform, and how long it takes to suffocate someone with duct tape. The defense tried to place blame on others, but without success. On July 10th, 2018, Denise and Latoya were both convicted. Denise was sentenced to life plus 10 years for the conspiracy charge, and Latoya was sentenced to 30 years. Though the motive is unclear, it is believed that Denise orchestrated Martre's murder because he was simply in the way. With him out of the picture, it left her ideal household with her daughters and Maurice. This is one big story of betrayal. Martre thought of Denise as a great mother figure in his life, as she was so supportive of his dreams, all the while she was plotting his murder. Denise betrayed Martre and Maurice, and ultimately, her youngest daughter betrayed her in revealing the truth, and it came full circle. Martre's sister said their father kept repeating that he was sorry to his ex-wife and apologized to her for what happened to Martre and for not paying attention. May Martre rest with his mother in paradise, and may his family find healing and ease through their grief. May Denise and LaToya stay in prison, and thank you all for watching.